Well, that has everybody pretty fired up on social media today. And here to discuss is my buddy, Ernie White. Ernie, welcome back to the show. I remember the last time we were talking about feeling the urn. Yeah, feeling that urn. Feeling right. the urn. Not that burn. Not the burn, Not the but burn. the urn. The urn, the urn. Right. The urn. Right. Because, you know, the candidates on the Democrat side of things, like Bernie and Hillary, I mean, Hillary's speech last night was like, Please vote for me next time. I will give you everything, okay? Free education, welfare for everybody. Nobody's ever going to have to pay for anything again in the whole United States, which is essentially the message of Bernie, who is making an, a staggering impact in this election. Who is speaking to the black vote? Well, that's just it. You know, like, the black people have gotten so much from the Democrat Party. I mean, if you look at Cabrini Green, in Chicago, we were allowed to live in these horrible ghetto situations. Mm. Uh, we've got great unemployment right now. We're at like 50% unemployment for black people. Mm -hmm. This is under Obama administration. And don't forget, Obama had a super majority in the Senate when he got there. He had the Congress. He had everything. He could have done anything he wanted and nothing was done. So, yes, we are on a plantation and we cannot get off of it. I think we're afraid to get off of it. It's interesting because uh, she went on to describe... Um, what she thinks is going on in this election. I want to go to that video. I understand you're not confident that the Republicans uh, would uh, win a majority of the black vote, but there is one Republican candidate who you think the uh, African Americans can identify with. It's Donald Trump. You know, as ma that? many people probably don't like me saying that because Donald Trump actually is the only person bothering to talk to black people and ask for their vote. He has a black spokesperson. You've seen her, Katrina Pearson. In his immigration plan, he talks about how deporting illegals is going to help black unemployment and create black jobs, not pander to Black Lives Matter. So he's the only one really talking to black voters, in my opinion, of the Republican side. Your comment on that? I think She's absolutely correct. I think Donald Trump is that, um, that bridge that can bring us all together. We are looking for somebody to fight for us. And let's be honest, the Republican Party has not come after the black vote. They really haven't come after any minority vote. Donald well, and, and I, wanna, I don't want to make a point about that really quick, Ernie, because I see it like this. I see it that the, the, the Democrats are going to continue to offer more and more free stuff, and, uh, stuff, and that will continue. And we never get increase. anything. We never get nothing. And it only keeps them enslaved. Uh, where the GOP candidates, really what they're trying to say, or at least what Donald Trump has pretty well spelled out, hey, I want you all to be billionaires, right? Well, he's saying that, I'm, first of all, number one, I'm going to bring these jobs back. And mm -hmm. that's the one thing that we don't have in the black community. We do not have jobs. So we are stuck. And again, the establishment has not reached out to the black community. So black people are afraid. Why would we leave the Democrat Party? Because there's nothing to leave. The Republicans have not given us any reason to come to the other side. Donald Trump is the first time, the first person that's actually made a person feel like they you could be confident to leave and come with me. He's not saying vote all Republican. He's just simply saying vote for me because I'm the guy that's going to get it done for you because the Democrats or the Republicans have left you. They don't care. Doesn't surprise me on my way to work tonight. Somebody uh, texted me a 20 minute long Diamonds and Silk. They've been on this show. Big Trump fans. Both I was on the show women. with them once. Yes. Yeah, they, they crack me up. Uh, but but a 20 minute rant basically on the way that they feel like Ted Cruz last night stole the election, stole the caucus rather from uh, Ben Carson, I mean from from Donald Trump by taking siph siphoning basically votes out of Ben Carson's campaign. It's kind of down in the weeds and hard to explain. But do you feel like last night was really Donald Trump's and uh, that the shenanigans that went on in the Cruz campaign may have caused him coming in second? Well, you know what? I don't like what happened with the Cruz campaign. I don't like that. I don't like playing these games, sending out these little tweets and saying that, oh, this person's going to leave the race. But the one thing I keep reminding everybody is at the end of the day, Cruz got eight delegates, Trump got seven delegates, and Rubio got seven delegates. So basically, we're talking a one delegate difference. Yeah. So with all the millions spent, Nothing changed, folks. Yeah. Nothing changed. We're still right where we were. So Trump is fine. You didn't win Iowa, but who cares? It's about the delegate vote. Okay, but I don't want, I don't want to let you go too long because I really want to get this question in too. He's clumsy. He doesn't do everything right. He doesn't talk like a politician is supposed to talk. He doesn't even go get votes the way a politician is supposed to go get votes. He's breaking all the rules. Some find him offensive. 
You say. I say that he is offensive to some because uh, you know we have different personalities. You've got your direct personality. You've got your people that are a little bit softer. You've got your thinking personalities like an accountant. And you've got those people that love everybody. So a direct personality is going to make everybody else mad because a direct personality only has one thing on their agenda, and that's to get whatever it is in front of them done doesn't mean that they're going to be loved by everybody because they're going to get it done. And that personality, that personality is going to be hated by those who need to be cuddled, who need to feel confident and secure and need to feel better. And I was offended that you spoke loudly to me like that. <laughs> the direct personality doesn't care. Interesting psychological analysis. Another reason that I'm still feeling the urn. That's right. Not the burn. That's the right. Urn. Not the burn, but the urn. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Thank you so much. That's why you're the doc. That's why you're the doc. It sounds to me like maybe you no, should no, be the doc. the doc. I think maybe it should be you. I'm just saying. She's the doc. Thanks for being with us, my friend. Up next, we're going to talk to someone who's been fired up about the Iowa caucus results on social media. John Hawkins up next. Stay right where you are. Coming back with the other side. I know when that hotline bling That can only mean one thing These days all I do is wonder Hi, I'm Dave Nemeth, television talk show host, and until recently, a hair loss sufferer. That's right, I used to have a bald spot right here on the back of my head. And being seen by millions on TV, it was embarrassing. That's when I took...